Alexander, his communications with Darius only fueling his desire for conquest, leads his army toward the naval center of Tyre. Alexander wishes to control Tyre because of its strategic location. The older part of the city is on the mainland, but a half a mile offshore is a heavily walled, impregnable island, also considered part of Tyre. I'm standing on the southern edge of the island of Tyre. Later earthquakes caused this area to slip into the sea, but this line of rocks marks where the ancient walls of the city once stood. Behind me was the southern harbor, one of two harbors in which the Tyrians kept their navy. If Alexander had his own ships, he could have mounted an amphibious assault from the sea. But more than a year earlier at Miletus, he'd taken the bold decision to disband his own ships and defeat the Persian fleet from the land by destroying its harbors and its bases of supply. Among the most important of those was Tyre itself. Controlling the island of Tyre means controlling the vast naval harbor. When Alexander arrives in January of 332 BC, the king of Tyre is away, serving with the Persian fleet. Tyrian envoys are sent to determine Alexander's desires. At first, Alexander tries diplomacy. This later Roman arch is close to where the old shoreline was. Here, the Tyrians come to greet Alexander. He tells them he wishes to visit their island to sacrifice at the temple of Heracles. The Tyrians know that to allow Alexander in means a surrender of the city to him. So they politely point out that there is a perfectly good temple of Heracles here on the mainland. Alexander is reported to have become furious and to say, I will show you that your island is part of the mainland. He must have known then there was only one way to conquer Tyre. To the amazement of the Tyrians, and even his own army, Alexander threatens to conquer the walled city in a manner unimaginable, even today, by building a mole or causeway one half mile long to connect the island to the mainland. Alexander himself has no idea how difficult it will be to accomplish such a bold endeavor. When Alexander the Great encounters unexpected resistance to his desire to conquer the walled island of Tyre, his plan of action to build a mole or causeway, allowing him to lay siege to the city, bewilders even his own men. The sight of the fathomless deep filled the soldiers with despair for it could scarcely be filled even if they had divine aid. How could rocks big enough be found, or trees tall enough? To make a mound to fill such a void, they would have to denude whole regions. The strait was perpetually stormy, and the more constricted the area of its movement between the island and the mainland, the more fierce it became. The Tyrians view Alexander's plan as absurd and consider the threat an idle one. How did the people of Tyre have the confidence to resist Alexander? Well, Tyre was a mighty city. These Roman remains are from the first and third centuries AD, but down here are some of the original fortifications of the city from Alexander's time. These stone blocks are around 2,500 years old. They formed part of the massive walls and towers which then surrounded the city. 300 years before Alexander's time, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon laid siege to this place for 13 years in succession. He failed to conquer it. So this is the outside wall. Ali Badawi is chief archaeologist at the ruins of Tyre. He explains that during Alexander's time, two walls separated by approximately six feet of space protected the island. The foundation for the outer wall was below sea level. They took in consideration if somebody is going to invade the, the island, he will 
tried to look for a small piece of land to land the army and to start the attack on the wall. So for this reason, when they built the walls of the city, they built it just in the edge of the rock at that time. So next to it, you have just the sea. As his troops prepare to construct the mole, Alexander hopes the mere sight of his army's determination will influence the leaders of Tyre. He tries one more effort at conquest by diplomacy. Alexander sent heralds to urge the Tyrians to accept peace terms. But the latter, violating international conventions, killed them and threw their bodies into the sea. Outraged by the disgraceful murder of his men, Alexander resolved to lay siege to the city. The massive task of building the mole begins in January 332 BC, with large quantities of rock being transported from old mainland Tyre and timber from a nearby mountain. Little by little, the mole began to rise above the surface and the mound's width increased as it approached the city. But as the mole proceeded further from the shore, the materials piled on it were increasingly sucked into the sea's depths. With their light skiffs, the Tyrians began to encircle the structure, attacking with missiles the men standing by the work. Alexander had hides and sheets of canvas stretched before the workmen to screen them from the missiles. And he erected two turrets on top of the mole from which weapons could be directed at approaching boats. As the structure of the mole finally reaches close to the walled island, the Tyrians make their boldest move. The Tyrians fill a ship with combustible material. From the bows, they hang pots of what was probably naphtha, a sort of napalm of ancient times. They tow the ship towards the mole and set fire to it. The pots of naphtha burst, and the siege towers and wooden palisades catch fire. Simultaneously, they attack with small boats from both sides, killing Alexander's workers and defenders. The attack is a complete success. Alexander's mole is a pile of smoking rubble. Undaunted, Alexander sets his soldiers to work building a new mole. But he also comes to realize that Tyre can only be taken by siege, waged simultaneously from land and sea. In July 332 BC, the second mole is finally ready. So are warships obtained from nearby Cyprus. As the Macedonian infantry attacks the walls of Tyre from the mole, Alexander leads forces across gangways from the ships. A Macedonian commander named Admetus leads the assault and pays for it with his life. Alexander himself takes his place, and after bitter fighting, his men break through and gain a small part of the wall. It is all they need. I am standing on the inner defensive walls of Tyre, and here, sure enough, the archaeologists have found a small breach in the wall. They believe that it is in this place that the Macedonians poured through the defenses. They cut down the exhausted Tyrians, drove them north into the main part of the city, attacked from the land and the sea. Tyre could not hold. The Siege of Tyre by Alexander's troops takes seven months. <laughs>